Hello everyone, welcome to the channel and welcome to my British Indian Artillery build order guide for the current patch in Company of Heroes 3. Now the British got a pretty big nerf in their most recent balance patch for the game and they are probably sitting at 3 or 4 in terms of faction rankings. I think personally 3, I think they're better than DAC but uh, that's not saying a whole lot to be completely honest with you guys. So um, let's jump into the build. I'm going to do an overview and talk about the build order. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about things to watch out for as you're using this build and things that can kind of mess it up and, and ruin you, uh, in game. So an overview of the build guys, this is really infantry heavy. It's Indian artillery. We're going to take massive use of the Gurkhas and foot guards as our elite infantry and use that volunteer infantry, um, battle group option to, cut down the cost of that and cut down reinforcement costs to basically have elite infantry as our main line. So again, Gurkhas and Foot Guard are going to do the heavy lifting of this build, and we're really not going to have any vehicles for the most part. Maybe a Humber or a Matilda or something like that in the in the far late game, but most of the heavy lifting is going to be done by guards and uh, Gurkhas, as well as um, a 17-pounder if you need it against heavier armor in the late game. And I've found this build to be very strong against most of the meta axis builds that we're seeing right now, especially Wehrmacht going, um, you know, mechanized into Panthers. Panthers have horrible anti-tank or excuse me, anti-infantry capabilities. Guards just walk over them. You just walk on top of the Panthers and they just cry. They can't do anything at all. Uh, meanwhile, your infantry will just slaughter anything that the Wehrmacht can throw at them. Um, even Panzer Grenadiers just fold like tissue paper when um, up against guards and especially against Gurkhas. So you can do some very, very dirty things. Um, and basically the whole point of the build is to capitalize on the power of those Gurkhas and the power of the foot guards um, to inevitably push your enemy out of the game. So as for the build itself, guys, obviously we start off with a Royal Engineer and we're going to go straight into our section command post. You can pick up an MG early game, especially if you're in a team match. An MG early can be very powerful, but in 1v1s, I typically don't do this. Um, I'm not a big MG player, I especially not with the Vickers. I just don't think it's strong enough against most of the Axis infantry that you're going to be seeing. Uh, it works fine against Grins, but once the Panzer Grins and the Jaegers start rolling out, it's just not that strong. Then you're going to want to go straight into uh, three infantry sections. These are going to be serving as your mainline infantry for the beginning of the match. And then obviously into Indian artillery, picking up Valor because it's cheaper than Warcry. Just one CP into Gurkhas. Then your mid game. This is going to be your kind of composition as you start thinking about the 8 rad timing. You're going to want to pick up at least one boy's AT rifle, depending on the game, maybe even a second one. And then a recce package. Uh, may, this is kind of up in the air. You're going to want absolutely one of each to find those machine guns and to push off those eight rads. But whatever this third one is kind of just play by ear. If you manage to get a lucky kill on that eight rad, maybe turn this into a second recce, uh, for that firepower and for those snares. If you're getting really pressured by those light vehicles and you're against DAC, second boys AT package is probably the right way to go. And then your Gurkhas are going to want to get Bryn light machine guns as soon as you can. Now from here, again, the 8 rad is kind of the big thing that we're thinking about. We're watching out for that. Stug D is another important thing to be uh, mindful of. We're going to want to pick up grenades for our infantry sections for those useful snares, for catching out any of those uh, 8 rads or lapses in micro from our opponent. And we're going to be wanting to tech into the platoon command post. Once we have our platoon command post up, again, depending on the match, depending on what the enemy is building, we kind of have a choice. If your enemy has gone uh, very, you know, light vehicle heavy with eight rads and Stug Ds, you're going to want to pick up the six pounder anti-tank gun. This is going to give you some good firepower to push off, especially those Stug Ds. It's got great pin. It'll do good damage and it will actually be able to deal with the Stug Ds when your boys AT rifles aren't going to be able to do that. If the enemy is going for the Wehrmacht like breakthrough or uh, and, and have gone tier three, like a heavy tier three with Panzer Grenadiers, the Stug G, which is the long range one, the anti-tank variant, a Humber's not a bad choice. I like picking up the Humber in those very specific situations. But if your opponent has gone for Jaegers and you're seeing Panzer Shreks, or if you're seeing uh, you know the, the eight rads coming out or they've gone mechanized and you know that they're going to be putting an eight rad out as Wehrmacht, you're really not going to want the Humber, it's just 35 fuel and it's just going straight down the drain. It's going to end up getting killed by an 8 rad, just absolutely ran down. But against the Stug G, it can do some really dirty things. You're also going to want to pick up your field infirmary at some point. You're an infantry heavy build. You want to keep your infantry in tip top shape. 
And from here, guys, you're going to want to be pushing very heavily for your construction or for your command post, for your company command post. There's nothing else in tier two that we really want. The bishop is not very useful. We don't want it. The M3 steward is too much of a fuel investment. We don't need that. We're going to be pushing heavily for tier three or tier four, excuse me, and getting our foot guards out because once the foot guards come out, the game's going to quickly start swinging it in your favor. The reason for this is because the foot guards give you insane firepower at close range, which complements very well with your infantry sections who are better at long range, as well as your Gurkhas who just kill everything anywhere because they're Gurkhas and they're fucking amazing. Your foot guards, again, also have this amazing gammon bomb combined with the Gurkhas, smoke grenades, and grenade assault is going to be an absolute menace for machine guns. Try to take out any machine guns that you can. They will be a massive headache for you. But your foot guards are going to be moving in tandem with one another while your AT gun moves with your Gurkhas and your infantry sections. And you're basically going to use this to pressure two of the objective points on the map, which will be absolutely devastating for the, your opponent. You can also uh, push into getting a 17 pounder, which is kind of how I like to do it. There's a lot of options that you have at this point. Again, I like to go for the 17 pounder, but I've also had a couple matches where I've gone for even Grants or Matildas, depending on just what the enemy has available to them. But I like the 17 pounder. You just bring this down to one of the objective points right like bring it for this map there's an objective point down here and one in the middle so you can bring your 17 pounder and just slap it down like right here or so uh, maybe a little bit up and just cover one objective point with it or if you're on twin beaches you can even cover the whole beach with it and you're going to have the 17 pounder which is just going to nuke any armor that the enemy is throwing at you and then your guards are going to pressure another objective point and they are going to be able to just throw anything away that is thrown at them and then you have your sections along with your other at gun this one can go with your guards your sections and your gurkhas are going to be pressuring the third objective point uh as well as obviously covering your 17 pounder and at this point you're 82 out of 100 pop cap a lot of options you can go and mg is not the worst thing ever probably picking up your training center along with your infantry and team weapon training and then just teching into whatever feels right in this moment. You kind of have a lot of options here. You can go with, uh, you know, I like getting a Matilda and putting it in front of your 17 pounder. It's just a wall of flesh. You'll have tons of fuel and you won't have to worry about that. You can also pick up the artillery piece from, obviously you're going to want volunteer infantry here. Oh, I did the wrong thing. But you want to pick up this artillery emplacement here, which can be very, very useful for just shelling enemy positions, shelling the enemy base, hitting, you know, fortified uh mg nests and things like that but that's kind of how this build operates guys again these infantry sections perform long range fire support for your guards covering your 17 pounder your gurkhas just absolutely chainsaw through everything along with your guards get those gammon bombs just the smallest laps in micro from your opponent will end up with some powerful wipes and once your opponent starts bleeding hard and loses just a couple infantry squads you will easily snowball and push them out of the match now, things to watch out for, good MG Micro will ruin this build. Good MG Micro is very, very scary for this build because obviously you're infantry focused. And if you are just walking blindly into MGs and you're not prioritizing getting rid of them through smoke, through artillery, through good bundle nades, good flanks, things like that, you are going to have a bad time with this build. Um, again, good MG Micro is horrifying when you're doing this build. So utilize those bundle nades, utilize that Gurkha smoke, Indian artillery mortars, grenades, artillery call-ins, anything and everything that you can to avoid those MGs, flank those MGs, and inevitably wipe them, you will absolutely need to do that to be able to win this game. Double MG is a nightmare to deal with with this build if you're not able to get rid of them uh, because it's just so hard to deal with them, uh, especially the MG42. The 8 rad is also incredibly scary. Uh, the 8 rad will just do very, very nasty and dirty things to you. Don't let the 8-rad just absolutely push you out of the game. Have those boys AT rifles ready. You don't need to have a bunch of recce packages. You don't need Bryn guns on your infantry sections. Let the Gurkhas do their job. Let the Gurkhas do their infantry anti-infantry the way that they should. Um, and use your infantry sections to support them through boys AT rifles. Uh, you know the 8-rad is coming. You know the DAC is going to build it. You know that the mechanized Wehrmacht player is going to build it. Take advantage of that. Know it's coming. And deal with it appropriately and finally guys play for late game this is a late game build this is a steamroll build you want to get to the late game with this build you want to lock down the victory points through the 17 pounders through your elite infantry and slowly bleed the enemy out of the game and push them out of the game 
uh, through just better infantry and more powerful infantry. That is how you win this game. I can't tell you guys how many games I've won with this build where I was losing for the first 75% of the game and I just three capped and pushed the enemy completely out of the game and locked the every objective piece down because there's just nothing that they can do. They can't push into it. None of the Axis infantry can stand up to the Gurkhas um, with Brins. None of them can stand up to uh, guards for the most part. And you're just going to easily be able to win the match through uh, your infantry and through that 17 pounder locking down and taking out any vehicle that comes anywhere near it. So um, that is, that is kind of what you want to be playing for. Don't lose your squads. Don't lose your head. Stay calm carry on win in the late game finally guys for team games uh, i would change up this build a little bit you're probably going to want to get an indian artillery mortar a lot earlier flanking is a lot harder in team games because the maps are a lot more lane based and a lot linear more linear so it's harder to just kind of abuse you know good flanks and getting good bundle nades and things like that down on mg so the indian artillery mortar is going to give you the access to the flare and obviously the powerful mortar itself to push off those mgs and, and take some ground um 2v2s i also typically pick up an mg a little bit earlier for like i mentioned before the maps are just more constrained you're going to have a lot better time with um with having that mg to just lock down some areas uh, a little bit better than you typically would that's it guys that's the build that's the order those are the things to watch out for um i've like i said i've had a lot of success with this build which is why i'm doing the video on it i've noticed a lot of people saying brits are bad struggling with brits so i figured i would share some of my success i'd love to hear what you guys are doing with brits and how you guys are succeeding a lot with brits um and on top of all of that you know this build is a lot of fun to do so uh, you know try it out see how it goes for you guys and your 1v1s and your team games and let me know in the comments down below if you guys are having as much success with it as i have but without anything else guys remember like and subscribe i appreciate it always helps me out and thanks for watching i'll see you next time take it easy